country's coast. Critics say the government acted too slowly after a Japanese-owned ship ran aground on a coral reef on the 25th of July. The Prime Minister told us here on BBC World News yesterday his government deferred to experts in its handling of the crisis. This was him speaking on BBC World News a day ago. He said that uh, there was a very low risk of oil spilling uh, and that uh, they were trying to stabilise the ship and in order to try to tow it out. So uh, weather conditions did not also permit that we start pumping the oil from the tanks. So uh, we, of course, go by the advice of those experts. Uh, unfortunately, the weather deteriorated so much that uh, one of the tanks was damaged and uh, oil started to spill over. Well, one of those criticising the government is the leader of the opposition Labour Party, Dr Navachandra Ramgulam. He's also a former Prime Minister, having spent 15 years in the role. It's very good to have you with us on BBC World News. Um, can we start with just an assessment of what you're facing there, Mauritius? How much of the 2,500 tonnes of oil did you manage to capture and how much of it is arriving on the beaches? It's a terrible, it's a tragedy of an unfathomable proportion, unmitigated disaster, ecological, environmental, economic, human disaster, which will last for years. And what's sad is that it was all preventable. The Prime Minister and his team did absolutely nothing for 13 days. Can you imagine? For 13 days, they were caught napping at the helm. Their incompetence and their insouciance borders on, on criminal negligence to me. How do you mean you know, they did, how do you mean sorry to interrupt you how do you mean they did nothing for 13 days what what warnings did they get 13 days before they acted first of all i've got uh, we've seen and i suppose you can see it too uh, satellite tracking of the vessel the vessel was not coming to mauritius had nothing to do with mauritius was going to brazil yet on the 20th of july it changed course and pointed towards mauritius and not to the harbor of mauritius the main harbour, but to Mayberg, which is in the southeast. You can ask yourself, once it started pointing towards Mauritius, nothing was done, absolutely nothing. It reached our maritime zone on the 25th of July. For those five days, nothing was done. There was no contact. You know, when a ship comes to the in our maritime zone, even if it's in the Innocent Pass, which is called Innocent Passage, he must contact the director of shipping. He must tell him what, where he is heading. He must give a reference number. He must tell him what flag the ship is floating and also what frequency he can be contacted. None of this was done. Was that a fault of they the government or was that a fault of local officials who should have been monitoring the ship? Well, you know, it's, a, it's the fault of the government and the officials, both of them. Because how come with all this, you know, I put, uh, I had a similar problem in 2011, August 2011. There was a ship called Angel One which was coming to Mauritius, and like this one, it was bringing rice to Mauritius, but it had fuel on board, it had difficulties. We reacted immediately. We stabilized the vessel, we pumped out all the oil that was on it. At the same time, we contacted friendly countries, especially Reunion Island, which is just uh, very near us. And then we, de we, we decided uh, we, we, we solved the problem. There was not one drop of oil which went in the ocean. So what uh, the prime minister is saying, He's saying, first of all, the weather wasn't good. He was relying on experts. At one time, he said, because it had a Panama flag on it. I'll tell you something. If you had experts like this, wouldn't you have sacked them by now? Hmm. What kind of experts are these? Uh, what, sort of, knows. what sort of access are, are journalists and experts now getting to the wreck and, and to the sites where the oil is washing up? I have, uh, I have no idea. You know, I must tell you, when we had this problem with Angel One in 2011, I immediately took further action because we had to be more prepared, obviously. I, I put in a full coastal surveillance system for our immediate maritime zone, radars, cameras. I brought in a twin engine helicopter in 2012, which has a long range. It can go much, much further than the ordinary helicopter. We got a modern and National Coast Guard vessel called Barracuda, fully equipped with the helicopter pad, with cranes, and uh, even a machine gun because we have pirates in our area at the time. And then a new Dornier plane. All these were kept where they were. Nothing absolutely was done. We don't even know. It seems they didn't even contact the captain of the ship. 
There was no communication. A ship is coming in your territory, in your maritime territory. It is not, he has no contact. It's coming towards you. It could be bringing terrorists, for all you know. And nobody contacts, nobody does anything. Mm. It's unbelievable. So what is the Prime yeah. Minister saying then to the journalists if he's being grilled and if the criticism is building? What is he saying to them? He's saying to them that they're exaggerating. He's preventing some journalists. He's put uh, two journalists, from, one from a radio, one from a newspaper, L'Express, and the other one from Top FM. He's preventing them from coming to his press conferences because they're putting embarrassing questions. Mr. There Rick. are other disturbing facts, I must tell you. There are other disturbing Quickly, I will tell you. This, and now we know that about the small boat, private, came up to it. Why is someone close to the prime minister, a henchman, who has a monopoly on fishing? Why was he there? Is he an expert? Why is he gone there? Why did the vessel continue on its path unhindered? We don't know whether the director of shipping had any contact with them. It had no engine trouble. We know this because the ship continues to travel at 11 knots per hour. And uh, the feeling is it was carrying something else for someone in Mauritius. That is why it didn't head for Portlis Harbour, but for Mayberg. That's okay. the feeling. Well, it's there are allegations, obviously, I, I can't verify, and we'd have to put those to yep. the Prime Minister, but maybe we can get him back on the programme to put some of what you've said to him. Uh, Dr. Ramgulam, we're really grateful for your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I wanted to just, can I say something else? Very quickly. We're out of time, almost. Yeah, I wanted to thank all these Mauritians who are helping. These are the real heroes. Day in, day out, they're helping voluntarily to prevent this disaster from extending. We Thank certainly you. salute them. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.